Hi guys, this is Mr. V and welcome to Apes Review Video. This is topic 1.4, the carbon cycle. Okay, so this is the first of many carbon cycle or many cycles, uh, carbon being a big one that you're going to hear not only in this topic, but you'll also hear later in um, uh, Unit 9 and several of those topics having to do with climate change. So we're going to touch on that this week or in this video, but it won't be as big until we get to Unit 9 later. Okay guys, so one of the key things to remember about the carbon cycle is there is going to be a huge component that has to do with the human portion, right? So um, for us, that's going to be a lot of the things right here in the middle, right? We do have some photosynthesis and respiration, but we end up playing a big portion of this. So we're not going to touch on it as heavily in this unit and this section, but um, it is worth it, worth, it to, worth it to mention, okay? So uh, because we end up playing a big role in how much trees can photosynthesize and um, how much animals are respiring and um, then of course our emissions are playing a big role in the carbon cycle today. But one of the big things to remember is uh, the big key terms here are photosynthesis okay, and respiration. So that's the big stuff to remember. Uh, knowing those is going to be kind of the big two steps and when you see this on an APES FRQ or even in a multiple choice question that's likely the things they're going to mention. Now, the other thing they're going to mention when it comes to the carbon cycle is where do you store carbon, right? And so the thing about any cycle to remember is that it's going to be stuck in any of the different spheres, right? The lithosphere, which is going to be your rocks down here, okay? So that's down here, that's the lithosphere. Um, it's going to be in the atmosphere. Oh, can't spell. And it's going to be in the biosphere. That's these right down here. Okay. So uh, depending again where those will be, and then of course you do have the water component as well, okay, the hydrosphere. And so um, as this thing moves, the, the key terms to remember here are going to be sources and sinks. So a source is going to be where the carbon originates from. Okay. That's going to be where is it coming out of, where did it where was it stored and put away, and then how did we get it back into the atmosphere? A sink is going to be where carbon can be stored for a long period or a short period of time. Um, so some sinks can be for hundreds of years, some can be for millions of years. It just depends on what we're talking about. But as I mentioned earlier, the two main forms of biological carbon that we're going to be focusing on are photosynthesis and respiration, and then also decomposition, because decomposition does play a big role as well too, and we'll talk about that later when we talk about feedback loops and how that can be a big role. Um, but decomposition is this idea that eventually it's going to break down and may form some sort of a gas such as methane or CO2. Okay. So this is an equation that I don't want to say you have to memorize, but it would be helpful to know the main components, right? You don't have to know the chemical equation specifically, but I do bring it up because some previous questions have asked this in the past on Apes questions. Um, so it's important to know the chemistry, but you, if you can write this in a word formula, right, um, this portion right up here, where you convert carbon dioxide and water into some sort of a sugar and then oxygen, if you can bring those up, then that should be enough. But if you're going to know the chemistry of it, that would be much more helpful. And the idea is that you have some sort of a carbon dioxide, right, um, with water. And it ends up perform or making a form of uh, glucose. So not glucose, but um, it can also make fructose or sucrose. Glucose is kind of just the model molecule that we show. So as long as you can say it's a carbon or a hydrocarbon would be more specific, then you should be okay. Um, and the thing to remember is that you like to think of plants and uh, trees and grass as kind of our primary photosynthesizers. But it turns out that algae ends up being really big on that. Algae is responsible for about 40 to 60 percent of the photosynthesis. And that depends again on season and location. Um, but you know, uh, the, the comment would be that if you're uh, breathing, you know, half, almost half of the breaths you're taking are because of the ocean and algae. So this is a Volvox species that you might see. Um, and those are the round cells that have chloroplasts that perform photosynthesis and make this reaction occur. So uh, as I mentioned, you don't have to memorize it, but it would very definitely be helpful. Um, on an apes exam. Okay. Now the other half of that equation is when you flip the arrow around. So basically if you can remember photosynthesis and remember that you got to flip that arrow, then you can remember, okay, well, the sugar in the presence of oxygen will burn and then it will produce CO2 and water. Okay, 
Um, if you were ever in chemistry, I used to do in a bottle experiment with my kids where you would take a, um, a five gallon jug, and you put a tiny cap full of alcohol in there, which form, which is a hydrocarbon as well. And you would drop a match in there and in the presence of oxygen, okay, um, it would end up burning and then releasing CO2 and water. Okay, so that's the same thing. It's a combustion reaction. Um, and again, you don't have to memorize the chemical formula, but it would be helpful for you long term to know these and have these ready. Um, and then again, the producers and consumers have to undergo respiration. That's something that needs to be remembered as well. Plants are also undergoing respiration. So plants are famous for, yes, they're doing photosynthesis, but they're also respiring at the same time. Okay, And so you know, a plant can... Uh, make glucose and oxygen and then the animals and you would even put a plant over here as well okay so it's important to understand plants go here too okay and then the plants and the animals would then respire and release that water and carbon dioxide that can be reused again okay um, so that's how respiration works and those are the two kind of uh, sides of the coin when it comes to carbon cycle and then the other thing to remember about is carbon reservoirs. The idea is you're going to see the word sink or reservoir somewhere on the AP exam. What that means is where you can store these things. Now, this right here um, shows where carbon can be stored on land, in the ocean, or in fossil fuels. Okay? Uh, these are, I think, petagrams. So these are just a bit, a couple levels above a, uh, a gigagram or megagram. Okay? Um, and so over here, you have the atmosphere, oceans, biosphere. So anywhere, these would be considered short term. So in the atmosphere, molecules can last uh, from hours to months. Uh, in oceans, they can be months to years or centuries. And in biosphere, months to years. Okay. Um, and so that's not a very long term place. In the ocean is a little bit more long term. But probably the biggest long terms are going to be your rocks, your fossil fuels, um, and your fossils themselves. Okay, so um, that's where carbon gets stored and can be your carbon reservoir long term. Okay, okay so one thing I want you to think about with um, deforestation, this small touching of human use in the carbon cycle, is one thing I want you to think about is if we grow trees and then we decide to cut them down, when they are growing in their time, they are going to be uh, storing CO2. Okay, so what that means that CO2 is going to be put in, and then say we for some reason decide to cut that tree down and burn it. Now, the thing I want you to remember is it has to go from here, and it has to go back up, and it's going to be what we would consider a net zero gain, right? Now, here's the problem with fossil fuels. Fossil fuels have been stored away for millions of years. There was no putting them away. Now, the problem is that when we burn them, it is going to go up, and it's not going to have a portion where it was stored. So it's all end up being a net gain. Okay, And that's where the human portion of this. So we're going to touch on this much more heavily in um, uh, when it comes to your uh, units later on, Unit 9, and uh, a little bit during air pollution. But it's important to understand that you're going to have a zero gain here when it comes to the trees being burnt. Uh, theoretically, because they did store a lot of carbon for a long time. And then if you burn that carbon, you're just releasing back what you put in, so there's no positive up here. But then with fossil fuels, there was no storing initially. I mean, it was stored, but millions of years ago. And that ends up being a net gain, and that's where the CO2 problem uh, plays a big role nowadays. Okay. So here's some other resources if you want to learn some of the carbon cycle basics. Um, and so, you know, hopefully that was helpful. And um, we'll see you in the next video.